Sinclair County Madadra. This is episode five in a multi-part series on intro to accounting topics. In this episode, we're gonna talk about different types of depreciation methods. First, we'll get into what gets depreciated, what kind of assets are we, do we care about when we're talking about depreciation. Then we'll look at the various factors that should be considered in our depreciation amount. In other words, what the asset value actually is. And then finally, we'll talk about how depreciation is computed under three different methods of depreciation. So let's first start looking at what's depreciated. Buildings, machinery and equipment, furnitures and fixtures, and land improvements are all different assets that are considered when doing depreciation. These are significant assets with significant value that have a estimated use of a life beyond one year. If you notice, one thing that's not in here is land. For US GAAP, land is considered an asset that is never depreciated. It sits on the books at its historical value, its purchase price on the day of purchase and stays there all the way to the point that that piece of land is disposed of. In talking about different types of assets, we have to understand what is actually embedded in the value of those assets. So let's, let's start with buildings. Building value includes the purchase price of the building plus any renovation costs that are incurred in order to get that building ready for use in the business. Or if a company chooses to build the building, it's all the costs included in making that building, including architectural fees, permits, material, and labor. Fair value is never included in anything done with respect to figuring out what a building cost is. Next, let's look at machinery and equipment. Machinery and equipment is determined by looking at the purchase price, including the taxes paid, any delivery fees, including insurance, cost to install that machinery and equipment or even test it to put it in place, and finally, any commissions incurred in the establishment of that machinery or equipment. A lot of times, machinery and equipment does incur other costs to get it ready for use. All of those costs used to get it ready for use are captured into that purchase price and is what is going to be depreciated. The next asset category is furniture and fixtures. This includes things like desks, chairs, filing cabinets. When you're in an office building, those different peripheral items that you may use for multiple years. And then finally, land improvements. Land improvements are those items which are attached to the land but are not part of the land. So this might include things like fencing, lighting, paving, and even signs that are added to the property to give that property its value. Now that we understand what's included in the actual cost that's being depreciated, we can talk further about how to depreciate under three various methods. Let's first start looking at the straight line method. Under the straight line method, a company looks at the cost of that asset reduces it by any residual value, so value that it thinks will be left with the property at the end of time, and divide that over the estimated useful life for that property. Estimated useful life is not something companies will go ahead and determine on their own. They will refer to US GAAP guidance for what the estimated useful life is. Let's look at an example. A company bought a new truck for $42,000 or the residual value of $2,000. The truck's estimated useful life under US GAAP is five years. So if we're depreciating this asset under straight line, US GAAP would say that the cost is 42,000 and we need to reduce that by our $2,000 residual value. We will take that 40,000 net value and divide it over five years. In the end, we get $8,000 of depreciation a year. The journal entry you make for depreciation is going to be a debit to depreciation expense for $8,000 and a credit to accumulated depreciation for $8,000. The credit to accumulated depreciation is a contra account. It is in the asset section of the balance sheet, but it reduces the asset value. Our balance sheet presentation would look like this. You have total property plant and equipment of $42,000 less our accumulated depreciation we computed for the year of $8,000 to get to a net book value of $34,000. The journal entry under straight line depreciation will be the same every single year. There's no difference, it's $8,000 a year. However, what will happen is the balance sheet for this company will be reduced every year by $8,000 by increasing the accumulated depreciation amount for the additional depreciation expense. 
What should happen at the end of, end of five years is the asset will be reduced by all the depreciation of $40,000 and will be left with a net book value of $2,000. In this asset's case, the, book will, the asset will sit on the books for the rest of time until it's either disposed of or it's sold. And in that time, then the asset will be removed as well as the accumulated depreciation and any gain or loss would be recognized. Let's look at the next, the next form of depreciation, double declining balance. Under the double declining balance, cost of the asset we've determined is reduced by accumulated depreciation divided by the estimated useful life again determined under US GAAP and multiplied by two. Looking at our same example that we discussed in straight line, let's now look at it under the double declining value method. So first of all, the cost will be the same at 42,000, but we don't have any accumulated depreciation at the beginning of this calculation because it's the first year we're depreciating the item. Notice also, we don't look to residual value. We're gonna consider residual value, but not until the very end. We then take this value, divide it by five years, and we'll multiply it by two. We're doubling the depreciation expense. In this case, we will end up with 8,400 times two, or $16,800 of depreciation expense in year one. Our debit will be to depreciation expense of 16,800, and our credit will be to accumulated depreciation for 16,800. The best way to look at double declining is to use a grid to lay out the various depreciation year to year. If you start with the depreciable balance divided by years times two, you'll get a current year depreciation amount, and this will also help better track accumulated depreciation for moving forward. Using our example in year one, $42,000 divided by five years times two doubled is $16,800, so our accumulated depreciation is also $16,800. In year two, we will now depreciate our new balance which starts with the 42,000 minus the 16,800 we determined in year one, divided by five years, doubled, gets us 10,080. Our new accumulated depreciation will be the prior year accumulated depreciation of 16,800 plus our current year depreciation of 10,080. Moving on to year three, we will now take 42,000 less 26,880, our accumulated depreciation at the end of year two, divided by five years, double that amount to get 6,048. Our new accumulated depreciation will be the 26,880 in year two plus 6,048 in year three, giving us 32,928. Continuing on in year four, same thing. We reduce our balance by accumulated depreciation divided by five years, multiply by two to get 3,629. And then in year five, all we do in the last year of depreciation is we actually just take our total value, less what we've depreciated to date, minus $2,000 of residual value to get a depreciation value of 3,443. That ensures that over five years, we fully depreciated the entire cost, less residual value of our asset. In essence, we should get the end of time if we've done our math right, Current year depreciation added up year over year of $40,000 and total accumulated depreciation of $40,000. Let's look at the journal entries year over year with the amount changing. In year two, we would depreciate expense for $10,080. We would have a credit to accumulated depreciation of $10,080. Year three, we would same journal entry of $6,048. Year four, Again, the same journal entry, but now 3,629. And finally, in year five, we would depreciate 3,443 and credit accumulated depreciation for $3,443. Third type of depreciation method is units of production. Under units of production, we look at the cost of the asset, less residual value, and we compare that to the useful life, but instead of years, we use units. And the units are determined by what the company thinks they would get for the value of the asset. Using the same example, let's now assume that ACO expects to drive the truck they purchased 20,000 miles in year one, 30,000 in year two, 25,000 in year three, 15,000 in year four, and 10,000 total of 100,000 miles. That means that the estimated useful life for this truck is 100,000 miles. In our instance, we would use the cost of 42,000 
In this case, we want to look to residual value like we did under the straight line method of $2,000 and divide that by our total estimated units of 100,000 miles. This in turn gives us that for every mile that we use the truck, we will depreciate that truck 40 cents on the mile. Using our math in year one, we'll take the 20,000 miles that the truck is driven times 40 cents per mile to get a total depreciation expense of $8,000. In year two, if the truck's driven 30,000 miles times 40 cents, that's $12,000 of depreciation. Year three, using 25,000 miles, we get $10,000 of depreciation. Year four, 15,000 miles gives us $6,000 of depreciation. And in year five, the last 10,000 miles at 40 cents gives us $4,000 of depreciation expense. Again, if this truck is driven beyond 100,000 miles, the asset will still be used. There just will be no residual depreciation expense because it's fully depreciated. Looking at our math, if we add up all of our depreciation expense over time, we get a total amount of depreciation over the use of that asset for five years of $40,000. Similar to all our other methods, we would use the same journal entries as well, a debit to depreciation expense for the value it computed and a credit to accumulated depreciation. Let's now compare the three different types of depreciation methods we've looked into and see how they compare and contrast over the life of the asset. Under straight line, we depreciated our asset $8,000 a year consistently. Under double declining, we depreciate more of the asset at the beginning of the time because we're doubling the balance and the balance is higher. As we get to the end of the life of the asset, we're depreciation less, depreciating less year over year. This makes sense for assets that depreciate in value significantly at the beginning. Maybe sometimes with technology, you might want to use double declining because you know the value drops immediately with the use of the asset. Finally, under units of production, the asset depreciation really depends on the usage of the asset. So it could be higher or lower uh, in the middle, at the beginning, or at the end of the asset. But all three methods generally provide for different types of depreciation. In total, though, we are depreciating the same $40,000, the original cost of the asset of $42,000 less residual value. One thing with US GAAP that's really important is ensuring that you use a consistent method over time. I hope you now have a better understanding of how to depreciate the various types of assets you can find on the balance sheet. Consider subscribing to save updates on when new videos will be published in the accounting section, intermediate accounts section, and even the personal finance section of Accounting with Audra. As always, if you have topics you'd like to make easy, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below this video.